Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's very interesting to be here again on a very nice topic that touches on the urban nation realization and agitation and all the other topics that are on the front burner. One thing I can just tell us is that if we did not falter and get weakened in dependence of our nation, the Yoruba land is very near and it's possible and it is realizable. That is based on all the facts, based on all the informations we are privy to. That is what is giving us this courage and this assurance that we can achieve our own independent nation. But then it baffles me that our people, we are working every day at a cross purpose. You know, somebody is going to north, another one is going to the west, another one is going to the east. Then how do we arrive at a specific destination that we've decided to arrive at? And that is the problem. And that is the topic I'm going to talk about today. Okay. Why are the Yorubas always working at cross purposes? Any house that is divided against itself can never stand and can two work together unless they agree. Can two work together unless they agree. That is in the Bible too. Can two work together unless they agree. In togetherness, we stand, and divided, we fall. All of these aphorisms are very germane to our topic under consideration today. We are all Yorubas, famously quoted and touted as the most enlightened, most exposed, most educated, and most polished of all the ethnic groups in Nigeria. And that is the truth. If all these are true, and our people are so disadvantaged and shortchanged in Nigeria, then something big is fundamentally wrong. Something big is fundamentally wrong. When there is no unity of purpose and a clear cut direction, I'm sorry, Yoruba's search for redemption would last for eternity. May God forbid. There must be a reason why the king is working on foot and his slaves are on the horseback galloping. This discussion today will take us down memory lane, but I won't go too far in the past. So let's start from 1993. And it may interest you that a lot has happened before 1993, but I will start from there so that I will not bore you with too much historical jargons. Okay. Let's start from 1993. After June 12th debacle, as majority of Yorubas and some sections of Nigeria were clamoring for the annulment of Moshud Abiola's electoral victory, Enes Shonekon, a Yoruba man, and his Fulani masters had another idea and eventually the unpopular demand won and Enes Shonekon blocked the opportunity of all Yorubas and Nigerians just to satisfy his satanic appetite for power. To satisfy his satanic appetite for power that he never worked for. A, to satisfy his satanic appetite for power that he never worked for. Consequently, hundreds of Yorubas were killed, some were maimed, And that lack of unity costed many Yorubas their military careers. Men like Olarewaju, General Abdul Karim, Adisa, Kone Akiode, General Dia, and scores of other officers. Oba Sojourn himself escaped by the whiskers. But today, he is playing his usual spoiler role. He is a spoiler, and today, he is playing his usual spoiler role. Whenever Yoruba's greatness is at stake, anytime there is a, a reason for Yoruba's to rise up and be who God has created them to be, 
Obasanjo always played the role of a spoiler. Now, fast forward to the event of today, to the happenings of today in Yoruba lands. Majority, majority of Yorubas have resolved that self-determination is the way to go and everybody is on board and the ship is sailing on a good pace and things are looking good. But again, lack of synergy and togetherness is drawing back the hands of the clock. As Professor Banji Akintoye and Chief Adeyemo and all, all the team members, including myself and others, are working assiduously towards a greater Yoruba land. Bola Tinubu, Yemi Osimbajo, Kyle Defayemi, and the rest of them, uh, this former governor of Ogun State, Amosun, they want to become Nigerian president and are ready to mortgage Yoruba land. They are ready to mortgage Yoruba land to achieve that. We all heard about the 350 million paid out to one Otumba Fulashade to destabilize Ilano Modua. And in an Ajeke Ilano Omokule ni scenario, she and some other unscrupulous Yorubas allegedly sacked Baba Kintoye from Ilano Modua. At least, see in Bafi Owora Ategun, Ategun in Lati Koloju, at least. If you collect if you collect or collected 350 million, you must work for your money. So the sacking of Professor Akintoye did not come just like that. Something happened. Somebody has paid and they have to do the job they collected the money. And that is the usual phenomenon in Yoruba land. This is how it is from time immemorial. Okay, let's go there. As if that is not enough. Olushe Gnobasanjo, that one, that one, that, that one Nigeria nearly killed some years ago. One Nigeria nearly killed him some years ago, 2008 to be precise. In 1997, 1998. Now, he said, he is more Nigerian than Yoruba and he is ready to block anything that may give way to the birth of an independent Yoruba land. Some other groups like Afeni Ferry, they want restructuring and they've been clamoring for this since 1999. And still, the beneficiary of the charade called Nigeria now want, they, they want to have nothing to do with restructuring. And the arrowhead of that group is Muhammadu Buhari. He has said he doesn't understand what is one Nigeria and uh, what, what is restructuring. He doesn't understand what is restructuring. And after the are clamoring, we want restructuring, we want restructuring, we want restructuring. Now you can see that there is more to all of this than meet the highs. I think you are getting my point. Division. Some people want Yoruba nation. Some want to be president. Some want restructuring. Some even want nothing. Some want continuity. Some even want, you know, as many as, as much as many people in Yoruba land, as much opinion. You understand it? Okay, let's go there. Finally, I want to quote the word of a wise man, Friedrich von Schiller. He said, and I quote, Even the weak become strong when they are united. And the only book says, One man will chase a thousand and two will put ten thousand to flight. And I ask myself, what would then happen if 60 million Yorubas decide to work together? Then we can become what God has created, created us to be. We can conquer the world. Because if, if one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight, that is the word of God. God said it. It is not a human being that said it. And if God says it, you have to believe that it is true. If two can put 10,000 to flight, how much can 60 million Yorubas in the world can put to flight? How many things 
can 60 million Yorubas achieve in this life if they decide to put their difference aside and work together as a team. Now you can see the evil that these people, these one Nigerian people are doing just for them to achieve their selfish goal that won't benefit anybody because they want to be president, they want to install somebody that is not a prince in Oshodias Oba. And you know the consequence of that? And when this crisis starts, the Fulani will release the army, they will release DSS, they will release police, and our Christ continues and bloodletting in Yoruba land because somebody wants to be president. You saw what happened in Magodo. You see the politics they are playing from Abuja police release to go and carry out a mission without carrying the governor along. And the governor was there. Ordinary policeman was practically humiliating the governor that more than 20 million voted for. That is what, what one Nigeria can bring. I can give you this assurance and a guarantee that when an independent Yoruba nation is accomplished, all of this nonsense will never raise their ugly head again. Never in Yoruba land with such kind of bullshit happen. That is why we have to respect ourselves and like I used to say, be who God has created us to be. We must be reasonable. We must not allow selfishness to be cloud our sense of reasoning. We must think about the common people on the street. Look at the old people that have nothing to eat. They have to depend on handout for people. Go to Crusade Ground, you see them there begging for everything. Their health is shattered. No money, no clothing. And these people have no hope. And the politicians are busy sharing money, wasting money for nothing significant. Just for them to become president. Just for them to become a senator. At the end of the day, when they assume that position, only their family, their girlfriend, will benefit from that position. And the rest, millions of Yorubas, will be suffering. I check my inbox every day. A lot of people making requests. How many requests can I satisfy as an individual person? I have no access to state, to state revenue. I have no access to government finances. How many needs can an individual meet in a populated society like Yoruba land? This is the reason why we must think properly and do so searching about the reality of our of our existence. You that you think you are a political officer that today, you have access to government money, you do all what you want to do. Think about your future. Your children may not have the same opportunity you have, but if there are institutions on ground system that are working. You don't need to suffer for any children. You don't need to leave any inheritance for anybody. The system will take care of itself. That is how it is in Western world. You do not need to go and embezzle you to keep money, give inheritance to your children, because as long as they have education, no matter how little they have, they are, they are guarantee of a decent housing, feeding, clothing, health care delivery. No matter how small their income is, that is what we are trying to put in place in Yoruba land. But if the extra level people, the Jansoke people, the Jagaban people says it is not going to be possible except if they destroy Yoruba land, then we will leave them to God and we know God does not side the wicked. 
when Abasha was thinking, he, he thought he, he owns the whole of Nigeria, five parties adopted him as the presidential candidate. He wanted to transmute to a life president. We know how God took him out. That God is not asleep. He's still awake. He's still on duty. He is watching. At the right time, he will strike. And the whole world will, will hear about it. No matter how, no matter what, I am very sure and convinced based on fact and figure and the information that we are privy to that Yoruba land will soon become independent and this independence will shake the whole world. That is my promise for you and that is what we are going to do. It's better we come together, work together, put all our energy together. Let us not dissipate energy for, for free for loss exercises, things that cannot better our people. Let us forget them. Let us focus on the real thing and be free. A slave does not have any right. Only free people have a right. In a free society, what Chief Adeyemo Igbo said or spoken about does not warrant him to, to, to be marked for assassination in a free society. But Nigeria is not free. If you speak about self-determination, they mark you for assassination. They mark, you, you, are, you are as good as dead. That is not a democracy. 1999 constitution is just a it's, it's just like a military draconian decree. It's nothing more than a, 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 a trash. A piece of paper that is fit only for it for the trash can. So I will not take much most much of your time today. You got my purpose, but my point, we are divided and it makes realization of our purpose difficult. And we have to choose properly what, the, what do we even want. We have to speak with one voice. And that lies. There lies our key to victory. May God help us. Have a nice day. This is Diamond Hughes. We hit the nails on the head, irrespective of who us is God. And that is what we hear. There's no missing word with us. We we'll do this and we'll continue to do it as God will help us. Till I come your way next time, have a nice day. Bye.